It is Chill the Beats, it's the Soul Food Selection, and joining me right now, we have got uh, Aurora, um, who, just before we started, I, I was showing off my dog, because all you could do is hear barking in the background. <laughs> how are you doing, Aurora? Are you good? <laughs> I'm doing very good, thank you. And how are you? I'm good, yeah. I'm, mm. I'm much better with this little animal on my lap. Oh, I can imagine. I'm I feel a... better already just hearing her bark. <laughs> I think that like, all interviews should have some sort of animal in it. Yes, it's therapy. Animals are the best therapists, yes, I think. exactly. Just a one-off payment and then yes. there you go. It's all, it's all done. Aww, a- anytime I've met you, like... Uh, we did an interview once in a like a, a place over a table that had a skeleton in in it, um, in London, oh, which was yes. really really weird. And then I think you had like a pet butterfly or something or a pet moth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A different time. So it, it feels like all of our interviews are sort of some some way like uh, like animalistically uh, <laughs> like oriented. That's very nice. We should keep that as a tradition. That's yeah. very nice. I think it makes our interviews um, good. Much better. Yeah, I think like next time we do an interview, I'm going to have a boa constrictor snake around my neck. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how is life for you at, at the moment? Is like uh, we're sort of like coming back to some sort of like semblance of of normality. Um, how is creative life for for you? Oh, creative life is extremely good. I. I have just figured out that the opposite lifestyle of my normal lifestyle is uh, what inspires me the most, (laughs) which is a bit sad, but also very nice because I've experienced just sitting still and being quiet for like a year and a half. And I've found it very good. I think I have one of those souls that likes being planted in one place. So it's it's done very good things for my creative self. Um, but of course, I've also been struck by, what do you call it, um, boredom mm-hmm. for the first time in years, which has been nice. I quite like being bored as well. I like the emptiness and the worthless days doing nothing, feeling like you you haven't done anything that has meaning. It's kind of a nice feeling. I like it. You've, you've been working pretty much flat out as a as an artist since you were a quite young teenager so like it, yes. it, it might have been quite nice for you to stop and stand still for a bit yes it has it's been very good for the mind and i've gotten friends so what's i've that, what's that like friends is weird <laughs> it's <laughs> it's very exhausting for the heart because you have to care or like you you care so much about them but it's nice i like it and i've been drinking a lot of wine like I'm kind of living my teenage years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's nice. And I mean, friends and wine are two beautiful things to to put together. Very true. What and about yeah. what what about love? You've got um, friends, you've got wine, have you got love? I have love for many things. Yes. And I have I have quite strong love for quite many people. Oh, yes, I definitely have love. I have lots of love. <laughs> it looked like you just looked around oh, the room there and you were like, oh, kind of like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, love, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and in terms of like writing and making music, like has has that been something that's been on your, your mind or like have you been treating it in a different way than before because of the circumstance? What? It's more that I can... I can hear, or I guess, you know, for me, music is a way to deal with the world. And even though I rarely write about personal things, I still use music to kind of deal with the impressions of the world because the world is so freaking intense. Um, But I've noticed in the music, I can hear now that the music I wrote last year is very different from the music I write when I'm you know, more in touch with the world, I guess. Because mm-hmm. um, I've, I've gotten the opportunity to be really in touch with, with my own mind and my inner inner world and child. And it's been very fun. It, it definitely makes new music, which I'm excited about. Um, but I'm happy that it's not like this all the time, because I, I guess then all the music would be 
the same, which is not good. Oh, so, Jesus oh. Oh, the dog did not like to hear about this. The dog, he, she, can, she hates she can hearing sense, about. She can sense things, like right, like yes. I mean, yeah. She's just like well, she I can sense things. I, like I don't. She's like, well, I don't care about Aurora's new music. I'm out of here. <laughs> there is no, but she hates that I I make new music. <laughs> she just wants to different. listen to the hits. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's. A, probably a dangerous postman walking outside, or maybe think, like the old lady next door is a threat, a possible threat the old, to your household. I mean, the the old lady next door, you, you you have to watch them. Like when I moved into the house, she she literally said mm. to me, she was like, "When well, I'll be watching you." <laughs> oh well, then I wouldn't mind if the dog killed her, <laughs> ate her. Sorry. Exactly, yeah, I can't get done for it. Do you know what I mean? It mm. wasn't my fault. No, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> on, on, on that bombshell, it's, it, it's time to, to, to <laughs> dip into the, dip into the, the food. Oh, um, the, a disclaimer, that is not a death threat. That threat. is not, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> all interviews should come with a, a disclaimer warning. And uh, the dis- yes. disclaimer warning on ours is we have issued no death threats to any no, neighbours. anyone. This uh Never will we ever do that either. <laughs> right, let's let's get into the music. Our our yes. our, our starter is um, something from Johan Johansson. Um, mm-hmm. Tell tell me about the the track and why you picked it. Well, um, as you may know already, I don't listen to m- music that much because it's slightly annoying for the mind. Um, um, but I I do like movie tracks because I like to to feed my imagination quite a lot mm. and whenever I kind of lose um, whenever I feel disconnected to myself it can be you know because of sadness or d- depression or that you just work too hard or that you find yourself within a group of people you don't belong to all of these emotions makes me feel disconnected to who I really am and I guess that makes sense because when you're in some kind of pain or confusion it's very easy to lose who you are and then then life becomes quite difficult. And this song and many other movie tracks songs helps me reconnect with me. And it, it kind of feeds my imagination in, in a nice way, which reminds me of why I'm here and that the, the world is magical and I am magical. And all of these beautiful things that kind of makes me, gives me a lot of strength and happiness. If that does it make sense? Do yes, make, it does. Yes? It does. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. You, so well, I listen to this song and I walk outside in in the forest and I get. I feel like I've been meditating. I'm gonna go for a walk in a forest with my dog. Literally after we finish this, I'm gonna stick yes. this on. I'm gonna see how yes. I'm gonna see how this works for me. And look up. It's very important to look up, not only forward or down. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, like, I think, like, normally I've got my headphones on and I'm staring at my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have to look up because you forget to do that all the time, or people do. But this song is very meant for kind of, I don't know, it's, it's very important. So please look up when you listen to it. <laughs> this is Johan Johansson with, um, am I pronouncing this right, Kangaroo? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Here it is. That was Kangaroo from Johan Johansson. Um, we're on to our main course now. Um, how much of an influence is this, is this next artist on, on you and, and the music that you've made? Um, well, not so much, surprisingly, because I know many people put me and her or like get the same vibes. Mm. And But I think she's way better at being experimental and spiritual in her songs. Well, while my, I'm quite like, grounded I guess not so experimental with things um, but I would l- like to be 
there one day because it's very fun. But she's much better uh, in what she does <laughs> than than I could ever be. But I am. I discovered her after I made my first album because so many people said that so, so I would love. No, but I didn't have music when I grew up. We didn't have a radio, and we didn't have. I still don't have any music streaming. So, so what age were you when you when you heard Björk for the first time? I I loved it. I thought that I I loved her. I love all music that feels ancient, and she feels ancient, but in a futuristic way. Um, and I love anything that feels connected to like our inner human nature. Because mm-hmm. I'm very inspired by like ancient music, um, and she felt like ancient music from f- yes, from the future, <laughs> and I like that quite a lot. And also, I like her words and playfulness, and I do resonate a lot with all the different things a woman can be at one time, because uh, that's very nice. This is and uh, uh, about this track. What well, like why have you picked this track from Björk? Um. Unravel. Well, I like cello. I think that's a beautiful instrument. Mm -hmm. And I like that she mainly uses a cello in this song. And also, I like the the world unravel quite a lot. When I searched up its meaning, um, it tickled the back of my brain and I enjoyed it. Um, So I like the title a lot too. And just the... I guess it's, it's kind of slow and sensual but rich and weird at the same time which is nice it's a good main course let's put on this ancient track from the future this is Björk and Unravel Chill the beats that was unravel and um, from Bjorke and we're we're on to the the dessert now which is something mm-hmm. for the pain a little bit of Joni Mitchell she's the mm-hmm. she, she's the, the queen the king the prime minister the sultan the president of yes. pain really isn't she yes <laughs> yes she is I think she's wonderful and um, I discovered her quite late as well <laughs> um, but I. I just enjoy her her melodies, I think. They sound like rivers. They're wild and they jump around, you know? Mm. And I, I, I like that. I like melodies that feels very alive. And I like making them myself too. Um, yeah, so I really like her. And there is something about this track, specifically the fact that she is a re, re-recorded version. Mm-hmm. when she's older and you can hear kind of when she sings her own song young it, it's much more naive and when she's older I feel like I can hear everything she's felt in her life and with more wisdom and even more pain and more understanding it's just a touching thing I don't know what makes me cry about it but it feels like um uh, I don't know what it is. It's just magical that she sings the song that she made so many years before uh, with a new with a new voice and a new heart. But the same woman uh, is very magical. And it makes me feel um, both reassured and like I've, I'm given comfort and a word of wisdom from an older sister. But yeah. also... I it makes me cry at the same time, so it's nice. Well, I hope I hope everybody's uh, in floods tears listening to this. Um, Aurora, thank you for putting together such a a dexterous and beautiful. Um, <laughs> you're giving it the chef's kiss, going Mwah. yeah, it's such a so good, so good. Um, so we heard Johan Johansson, Björk, um, and we're finishing now 
on um, Joni Mitchell. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm.